On today's show, California is offering incentives for used electric cars. Uber offers a new service that could really hurt car sales. And the VW scandal goes from bad to worse. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily for September 25th of 2015. While VW's emissions scandal is going from bad to worse, Bloomberg reports that VW faces 60 class action lawsuits in the U.S., including actions filed by the Attorney General in 27 states. Even the FBI has opened an investigation. And the German transport minister announced that the diesel scandal also involves VW's light commercial vehicles. The mess could cost the company its number one ranking in terms of car sales. Morgan Stanley predicts the scandal will reduce VW's worldwide sales by 400,000 vehicles next year. That would put Toyota in the lead. And more heads are starting to roll. As we went to press, VW's board was meeting where it's expected to fire Ulrich Hackenberg, the head of development at Audi, and Wolfgang Hatz, who heads up development at Porsche, and named Matthias Mueller as the new CEO of the company. Also. The EPA is holding a press conference later today to announce further updates on its actions against Volkswagen. So as far as VW is concerned, there is a lot more bad news to come. Sales of the new Chevy Silverado started off slow, but lately they've been red hot and Chevy is hoping to keep up that momentum with the newly refreshed version. We showed you an image of the new hood, grill and headlamps back in July, but now we're learning more. For 2016, the 8-speed automatic transmission that's standard on Silverados with the 6.2-liter engine will now be standard on LTZ, Z71, and high country models with the 5.3-liter V8 engine. The truck is now able to support Apple CarPlay, and models with the 7-inch display screen can support Android Auto. Additional safety features are available, and a new set of LED taillights for the high country round out the improvements to the 2016 Silverado. Speaking of trucks, Nissan had the all-new Titan XD on display at the State Fair of Texas. Unlike Chevy trying to keep up strong sales, Nissan is just looking for a decent boost. The automaker sold a paltry 12,500 Titans last year. Part of the turnaround will include a new Cummins V8 diesel engine that's rated at over 550 pound-feet of torque and capable of towing more than 12,000 pounds. There's also a host of new safety and technology features to improve the towing experience. Look for the all-new Titan at Nissan dealerships this December. Still to come, auto suppliers are doing a poor job on social media, and Ford is giving a behind-the-scenes look into the development of the new Focus RS. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, breakthrough technologies for lightweight vehicles. And by Pure Michigan, leading the automotive world in intelligent connected vehicles. We run on brain power. Social media is a great way for companies to engage with customers. But a new study from Bianchi PR reveals automotive suppliers are missing out on a big opportunity to reach out to more people. The report looked at social media usage in the first half of 2015 of the top 25 North American suppliers on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. While they've made strides in the last year, researchers say suppliers are still making mistakes. First, suppliers need to share more of their media coverage. The report found it actually decreased from 2014. Next they need to cut back on posts that are self-promotional, increase posts with visuals, and use LinkedIn more often. And finally, the report says suppliers need to post on a more consistent basis. So maybe suppliers should take a page out of Ford's book and do something like this. Starting next week, the company will release a series of YouTube videos about the behind-the-scenes development of the new Focus RS. The company says the documentary will be a warts-and-all look at the new car and follow its development from the design studio to its world premiere. 
As we've reported, ride-sharing has the potential to drastically reduce car sales. And if this new feature from Uber catches on, sales could really take it on the chin. The company is launching a program in Chengdu, China, called Uber Commute, that allows drivers traveling a long distance to share a ride. The company already offers a service called Uber Pool that allows passengers to share rides, but the new service allows car owners to pick up passengers to share the cost of a trip. The driver signs in and tells Uber where they're going. They're then given requests from riders traveling in the same direction and how much they'll receive for the trip. The driver can decide to pick them up or not, but from the passenger's point of view, the Uber experience is the same. The company hopes to roll out the new service in other cities around the world in the future. Coming up next, a look at why California is offering incentives for used electric cars. True love will find you in the end. Hi, Dad. When you're committed to the job, your tires can't be weak in the knees. Let him go. Durable, dependable Firestone tires. Whatever you drive, drive a Firestone. One of the criticisms of California's and other government incentives to buy electric vehicles is that some of those credits go to subsidizing luxury cars like the Tesla Model S. On AutoLine this week, we were joined by Dr. Alberto Ayala from the California Air Resources Board, and he says the state is expanding its program to make sure EVs get in the hands of not only the rich, but also lower income people. Some of our uh, legislative leaders are very engaged in that question. And in fact, uh, we are now rolling out programs that are meant to focus specifically on ZEV adoption for lower income people, mm -hmm. where we are actually scaling the rebate uh, based on income. From an air quality and climate perspective, any ZEV by anybody is a good thing, right? Because you're growing the market, you are promoting technology, you're essentially eliminating emissions that otherwise, you know, impact our environment. But um, obviously we are sensitive to the fact that, uh, and we are uh, very keen on um, the understanding that our policies need to help everyone in California, not just uh, high income folks. And again, uh, part of our investments are strictly geared towards um, disadvantaged communities, towards lower income folks, because again, the technology is real. But you would think that the disadvantaged or low income simply are not gonna be able to buy a new car anyway, whether it's a, an advanced technology one or just a regular one. And again, here's an example of how uh, our policy is responsive and nimble. Um, we are expanding our program so that you can also um, include used cars. And again, we've had great examples and many of them have been in the press. So if you bought a used Nissan Leaf, for example, for example you can still get ex exactly. the, the, the full amount. We have, we have programs that actually go above and beyond the full amount. So this is really a portfolio approach, what we're trying to do. And mm -hmm. again, we're trying to change uh, the landscape. Uh, and we get that for ZEVs to work, they need to work for everybody. Also joining John for that show is Chris Grundler from the EPA. Unfortunately, that show was recorded before the VW scandal broke, but there's a lot of great info about how the EPA and California are tackling emission issues. Well, that wraps up today's show. Thank you for watching and have a great weekend. Wards is the industry leader for news, data, and analysis. That's why companies across the globe subscribe to our premium service, maybe even your own. Log in for subscriber access now. Check your company's intranet for details and rely on wardsauto.com to keep you informed.